I'm here to talk about trends in the titanium market in the, in the Russian Federation. Um, in general, the uh, Russian Federation is no different from the rest of the world in terms of overall applications. Um, producers of titanium sponge in Russia, you can see that v VSMPO Visma is the dominant producer. Uh, VSMPO has a capacity of about 44,000 tons. We're currently operating at about 37,000 tons. Uh, Solocomsk, Magnesium Works is the other producer. Uh, they have a capacity of about 5,000 tons, and uh, they're currently operating at a level of about 2,000 tons. So uh, nearly all the sponge at, uh, that comes from VSMPO is consumed at VSMPO. Very, very little is uh, sold on the open market. So uh, you don't see much impact in the titanium sponge pricing in the world market due to anything that's produced by VSMPO Avisma. Um, moving downstream, when you come to the titanium ingot producers and the structure of the market, there are five producers in general. Again, VSMPO dominates the, uh, the, the activity. Uh, the other four producers are really um, so almost laboratory sized. Vils is, a, uh, is, is truly a, a development company. Um, CTK is also known as Stupino, and they are a very small producer with a less than 1% share of the total production in Russia. Uh, CMP and ZMP are also very small producers of negligible volumes. So uh, really the, the titanium in Russia uh, in ingot form is produced generally at VSMPO. Again, VSMPO sells very little ingot on the market. Nearly all the ingot we produce is uh, consumed internally for downstream mill product and parts consumption and production. From the overall market, you can see that uh, the aerospace world is about 55%, the industrial world is about 45%. The general breakup, breakout of each segment is uh, very similar uh, to what you see in the rest of the world. The one place, as was mentioned by Henry, is uh, in our shipbuilding uh, industry, where uh, the Russian market uses quite a bit more titanium than uh, other producers. Um, you can see the various percentages by by each segment as you look at this chart. And um, the total demand is about 10,000 metric tons in Russia for these applications in total for all market segments. Focusing in on the aerospace market, um, over the past several years, um, I've discussed the idea that there were many various agencies, for instance, that made airframes. Uh, the, the market demand has diminished significantly over the past 30 years. <clears throat> they, along with the various engine companies, have been consolidated into one group. So there is now a United Aircraft Corporation that focuses on airframes. There is a United Engine Corporation that focuses on engines, rather than having many different design bureaus and manufacturing bureaus. Helicopters, again, is a, is a large number by count but not a very large amount of titanium consumed. And there is a, obviously a space industry as well, Roscosmos, uh, that, that does consume some titanium. It's an active bureau, but it is not uh, a high consumer of titanium. On, this, on the aircraft side, the, uh, the, the commercial markets uh, generate um, a certain amount of activity led by the Sukhoi Superjet. Then we move on to the military markets where you have uh, Sukhoi is the primary activity in the military world. There are other programs here with MIG and Yak. Uh, and then you get to specialty markets, cargo markets and so on, where the Aleutian 476 and the BE-200 contribute to, to each of these. So piece by piece, you can see aircraft building, a helicopter is a small slice, then you move on to rocket production is slightly larger, and then general engine building is the largest consumer of titanium in the Russian market. In general, these have been very stable. It's right around 5,000 tons. We'll be increasing over the next several years. In the industrial market, we move on to, uh, again, consolidation by 
segment. So in shipbuilding, there are many different types of ships, uh, surface ships, submarines, oil platforms, all are consumers of titanium. Uh, nuclear power, as was discussed earlier, there is a construction and modernization of nuclear power plants. Uh, chemical industry, non-ferrous metallurgical, where you're uh, refining various materials using titanium in those applications. And then there is the oil and gas production side with fittings, flanges, piping, vessels, and so on. On the shipbuilding side, again, in 2017, the market is uh, a little bit better than it's been for the prior and post-2017 years. In general, it's been about 2,000 metric tons. We expect it to be that way. There's 2,500 metric tons expected to be consumed this year. Again, uh, you can see the various types of platforms, offshore engineering equipment, specialized ships for Arctic region exploration, uh, military shipbuilding and submarines, mini submarines, missile launching ships, um, frigates, all these for Russian naval forces. The industrial market is led by um, Ross Adam in the power engineering world. Uh, in general, the, um, it takes about two, two, somewhere between two and 400 metric tons per power plant, depending on the design for, uh, for uh, these applications. So you can see that there are two to three power plants designed to be produced and either retrofitted or new production in, uh, in each annual time period that you see here. Uh, 2017 and 18 are a little bit lower. Uh, we see some increase coming on up to about 700 metric tons in 19, 20, and 21. So the market is, uh, is while not gigantic, it's a very good business and very stable business overall. So we move on to uh, key drivers. And in the shipbuilding side, you can see about 2,000 metric tons. On the power generation side, you see about 700 metric tons. Um, there are these various and sundry other pieces of it that were discussed earlier. And in total in 2016, they consumed about 1,700 metric tons. So putting them all together, you come up with a, a market that, uh, again, 2017 is relatively better than the other years. But nonetheless, we're in the 4,000 to 5,000 metric ton range, stabilizing out at about 4,500 metric tons on the industrial application side for consumption in Russia. So adding them all up, you can see that uh, the market in 2016 was just less than 10,000 tons. As we look forward, we see it being at approximately 10,000 tons. Uh, all told for the future. So again, good, good domestic business for us and uh, uh, generally speaking, the same sorts of uses and splits on titanium consumption as you find in the rest of the world by application. <laughs>